Yeah, hey team, this is Shravan here. Today I'm going to train you on Selenium training using Java. So before going to learn Selenium training, let us go and see some of the key concepts, some of the basic concepts of QA. Okay. So let me go and introduce what is software testing. So probably uh, many of them will be looking into software testing jobs and all this. So people will be uh, hearing about, you know, manual testing concepts and automation testing. Then what is the difference between a manual tester when compared with an automation tester? and how about performance test engineers so let us go and see what is the difference between this manual testing and automation testing and then we gonna work on one of the automation testing tool that is selenium okay so coming to this man uh, software testing what is software testing software testing is a process of verification and validation to ensure a defect free application to the client so over here software testing is nothing but a process of verification what do you mean by verification team verification is is uh, a process to verify that you know we are going to uh, ver uh, say the uh, a team or we are going to make sure we are going to ensure that we are following in the right path okay that is something called as verification when coming to validation validation is something a testing activity a QA activity where in a QA people are going to test the application and they are going to ensure that the application is working as per the requirement so here software testing itself is a process of verification and validation to ensure what do you mean by ensure team ensure in the sense we are guaranteeing the client saying that the application which we are going to release the client is a defect free application okay so let us go ahead and look into the difference between what is manual testing and automation testing okay now coming to manual testing what is manual testing performing testing on the application or product with the human interaction is called manual testing so over here when it comes to manual testing team say i want to go and log into my gmail application for example so what i will do basically i used to go and open the browser either a G, either a, a chrome browser or a mozilla firefox browser or internet or explorer browser or opera or safari browser whatever the browser it is then once my browser has been opened, I use, I would like to go and launch the application by typing the URL as www.gmail.com, right team? Then what we are going to do, we are going to pr provide the user credentials over there, right? In the username edit box, we are going to provide the user credentials saying the valid user credentials we are going to provide over there. And then if I want to go and log into my account, I am going to click on the sign in button over there. So when I go and click on sign in button, what happens team basically over here upon the click on sign in button, my application or my page is navigated to the Gmail inbox page wherein I can go and see all my emails inbox inbox uh, emails over there. All right team. So that is something called as a manual testing what we can do. So when I go and enter some values over there and when I click on sign in button, obviously it will take me to the inbox page, right team? That is something called as manual testing. So performing testing on the application or the product with the human interaction. So how you are going to perform testing team? You are entering the URL with the help of the keyboard, right team? It is not the tool which is going to help you or you are going to enter your user credentials over there with the help of the keyboard, right team? And then you are taking the support of your mouse moving on to your sign in button and then you are going to click on it that is something called as manual testing team that means a total human interaction total human interaction is in between the application and and the human being to go and perform some of the functionalities right team that is something called as manual testing then coming to automation testing performing testing on the application or product with the help of some third party tool is called automation testing when it comes to third party tool team if you go and look into the market there will be some n number of third party tools so over here in our training classes we are going to look into selenium training okay so we are going to focus much more on selenium concepts team so basically uh, when you go and look into the market team qtp tool and selenium tool are the familiar tools for an automation testing team okay so what is that we are going to do over here in automation when compared with manual testing in automation testing we are going to write some code over the team so when i go and run the code what this test scripts will gonna do is it will go and open the browser it will go and enter the URL. It will go and enter the username, enter the password, and then it's gonna click on sign in button, right team? And then it's gonna validate whether the application is navigating you to the inbox page or not, right team? I'm comparing this example with the previous example that I told you in the manual testing concepts, right team? So over here, what is that we are going to do? We are going to take the support of a tool and then we are going to design some of the scripts. Then when I go and run the scripts, it will go and perform some of the functional activities over there that is something called as a manual testing and automation testing team 
fine let us go and look into some of the advantages of automation testing over there okay so the very f there are a lot of advantages of automation testing team but preferably i have placed five of the main advantages which we uh, easily go and look into it let us go and look into it team the first main advantage of automation testing is the repeatability when it comes to repeatability team what do you mean by repeatability let us say for example if i have got an um, thousand user credentials to me okay my client has provided uh, let us say 10,000 user credentials to me with a valid uh, with a username and a password as well and then he is asking me to validate what all the user names are valid and what are the user names are invalid so how can I go and perform this repeatable activity team if I go and work with a manual testing concept so probably it will take literally 8 to 10 hours of, of my time to go and verify all these 10,000 user credentials right team but over here when i take the support of an automation testing tool obviously it will take two to three hours of my time to go and validate all these 10,000 user credentials okay team then when coming to the repeatability when i talk about the repeatability team you are going to open the application you are going to enter the username you are going to enter the password and then you are going to let us say the uh, 10,000 user credentials over here is related to a gmail application okay i have got my client has provided 10000 user credentials username and passwords different usernames and passwords of a gmail account and he want to validate what are the credentials which are valid and what are the credentials which are invalid so what i need to do team as a manual test engineer what i will do i will go and open the application my gmail application then i used to go and enter the username and the password and then i am going to click on sign in button so if it is taking me to the inbox page obviously if it is taking me to inbox page so probably uh, um, that is a valid credential right thing if it is not taking me to the inbox page and then if it is going to show me some of the error message saying that the username and the password is incorrect then in that case what we gonna do team we are going to ensure that that is an invalid credential right thing. so the same way we are going to follow for fun 10,000 user credentials okay team this is entirely a repeatable task and it is hard for us to go and do the same activity again and again right team so in that case an automation tool can easily go and look into it so what we gonna do we are going to put all this 10,000 user credentials over there in an excel sheet we'll go and write a script saying that okay go and pick the data from the excel sheet and put it over there in the application and go and validate it right team so in that way we are going to validate all the 10,000 user credentials and probably it will take not more than two to three hours of time to go and validate all these 10,000 user credentials so this is what the advantage of so first main advantage of the automation testing tool that is the repeatability then coming to time saving team yes as i told you if you if you go with a manual test engineer obviously the same example which i told you in the repeatability okay if i if you go and uh, look into the same example team okay if i want to go and validate all these 10,000 user credentials it will take literally 10 hours of my time to go and validate all these user credentials now if i go and use an automation testing tool team obviously it will go and take some two to three hours of time that means it is going to save my time a lot not 50 percent more than 50 percent right team then reducing the manpower when coming to the reducing the manpower team let us say for example let us go with the same example that is 10,000 user credentials team now over here i have got the requirement from the client saying i have to go and validate all these 10,000 user credentials and i have provided a time estimation of 10 hours but my client doesn't want to wait for 10 hours wherein he he want the results to be uh, available over there within four hours okay team but i have provided the time estimation of 10 hours and my client let us say my client has provided me no no it is not possible i cannot wait for 10 hours and uh, go and pro and he is asking me to go and get the results within four hours of time then in that case what we gonna do team basically in that in that case we are going to hire more resources more manual test engineers and then we are going to divide the task and then we are going to assign the task to them right team so this is how happening in order to why we are going to hire the resources team in order to meet the client requirement if i go and uh, hire let us say for example if i hire um, two resources as a manual test engineers team so obviously i can go and divide the task with the, between them right i can go and divide the task between them and then within the within no time like you know within three hours of time i can able to finish come uh, finish the uh, entire testing activity right team but over here what is that indirectly proportional team what is that affecting the manpower is going to be affect because we are going to increase the resource over there so if you go and hire an automation test engineer obviously 
if you go and use an automation testing tool then obviously you don't have to go and hire any manual testing test resources right so there it is an advantage that means a one manual test engineer can reduce the manpower okay team then coming to the accuracy team so accuracy in the sense let us go with the same example so over here if i if my client is asking me to go and uh, uh, get the results within 10 hours of time so uh, since i provided 10 hours of uh, estimation time and my client is agreed for it and he has provided me okay boss go and go and uh, have the validation and within 10 hours of time you need to go and give give me the report now there is no one in this um, world that they that he can go and sit for continuously 10 hours working over there right team obviously we have to respond to our colleagues will be we have to take some break for a coffee or tea or we have to go and uh, you know take the calls as well okay we have to communicate with the people we have to respond to the people as well right team so in that case we cannot go and uh, cons we cannot go and make sure that we are going to spend entire 10 hours of the time on testing so in so when when uh, when there are some interruptions in such in such scenarios what happens basically is we might be missing some of the validations team okay we might be missing some of the validations as a manual test engineer but when it comes to the tool when i go and write the script over there when it when i to when i ask that ask the tool to run tool does not require any break tool does not require any coffee break or tea break right team so tool does not have to communicate with some other some other tools right team so probably it is it's a tool who is going to manage anything so the result what we are going to get is more accurate when compared with a manual test engineer okay team fine then coming to the last point that is reducing the production defects yes obviously when we meet the repeatable activity time saving and accuracy as well then there won't be any production defect what is the production defect team basically production defect is something a defect which has been raised by the client in the production environment that is user acceptance testing in user acceptance testing probably if the client is going to raise any defect that is something called as production defect team and we should ensure that there won't be any production defect team if you are going to uh, caught off any production defect because you are going to ensure the client saying that there is no defect right and if, he if the client is getting you uh, identifying some defect and he is going to get any defect over there probably probably in some of the critical scenarios team you might be fired so you have to ensure that there won't be any production defects as well fine then let us go these are some of the advantages of automation testing now let us go and see what are the disadvantages of automation testing team license cost of the tool <coughs> when i say license cost of the tool yes uh, apart from selenium team there are some tools like let us say let us go with qtp tool yeah license cost of the tool for the qtp tool is pretty much high okay it costs something around 8 lakhs to 10 lakhs um inr per year for one, only one user okay team so for events for cisco tool or ibm tools okay ibm automation tools the license cost of the tool will be pretty much high okay then lack of technical knowledge of the resources what do you mean by lack of technical knowledge of the resources team when i say lack of technical knowledge you if you go and look in the market there will be you can find very few people who are well trained in selenium you cannot find uh, people see uh, automating or running the scripts that is fine but how about the framework designing a framework and all this that is the main concept team okay you should know what is the framework how to write the framework how to design a framework how to work with a framework and all this okay when coming to the selenium training of this like you know i am going to train you on basically uh, we will be we will be covering uh, some of the hierarchy team so initially i will be training you on selenium ide then i will be training you on some of the core java concepts and then we will go and look into selenium ide then we will work on selenium rc and then selenium web driver after completion of selenium web driver we will go and look into some of the frameworks that is the inbuilt frameworks as well as the user defined frameworks okay team so probably we are going to work on some of the inbuilt frameworks like JUnit and test engine and we'll be working on some of the user defined frameworks like data driven testing keyword driven testing hybrid driven fetch testing and if time permits we'll go and look into cucumber framework as well okay all right team so the very next point that we are going to look into is so will not support for all the technology so all the automation tools will not be supporting all the technology team what do you mean by technology team the technologies are java technology dot net technology okay there will be a lot of technologies like you know joomla drupal php and all this so all the automation tools may not be supporting okay all the tech entire technology so even it is mandatory to go and look into it whether the tool that we are going to use is going to support the particular technology that we are going to work on all right team 
fine then let us go and see what is the different types of automation tools as per the usage automation tools are divided into three types team what are they functional testing tools test management tools and performance tool what do you mean by functional testing tool team when it comes to functional testing functional testing tool uh, the best example that we are going to take is qtp tool as well as the selenium tool wherein these tools are gonna be a functional testing tool and they do have a good demand in the market as well okay so what is that we are going to do over here with the functional testing tool we are going to verify the functionality of the application whether the applications workflow is working fine or not okay team then coming to test management tool what do you mean by test management tool test management tool is a tool wherein we are going to maintain the entire testing activity over the team okay so for example let us say the QTP, uh, quality center tool so quality center tool is the best example of a test management tool wherein we are going to maintain the entire testing activity starting from the requirements then we are going to have the test cases then test uh, you know we are going to uh, create the test source and we are going to have the test cases as well we can go and execute the test cases over there we can raise a defect or log the defect over there in, and then we can go and close it as well in the test management tool that is quality center tool <coughs> apart from this test apart from this quality center tool there is a good tool which is going to be uh, predominantly used in the market as of now in the real time scenarios that is jira jira is one of the tool team okay and jira also comes into test management tool fine then let us go and look into the next tool that is performance tool so coming to the performance tool what are the tools that we go we going to have uh, or else uh, what is the, what are the tools that are going to perform testing team that we are going to use for performance testing that is load runner and the apache j meter okay load runner and the j meter are the tools and there are a lot of tools team it's not the load runner and the j meter there are a lot of tools the only thing is that the best examples that you you are familiar with like you know you may be looking into this load runner testing or performance or performance testing tools or j meter testing and all this right so these are the examples of a performance testing tool team fine let us go and see the next concept so let us go and start with the selenium team selenium is the functional regression testing tool for the web based application when i say functional regression testing what do you mean by functional testing team we are going to validate that is we are performing testing on the application with respect to the functionality then coming to regression testing what do you mean by regression testing team we are going to test the application workflow from the end to end testing that is something called as regression testing team okay so selenium is a functional regression testing tool for the web based application yes selenium is going to support only for the web based applications team we cannot go ahead and automate windows based application using selenium tool yeah so as i told you selenium is only going to support a web based application and not a windows based application team and who has developed the selenium team when i go and look into the history of the selenium selenium has been developed by jason hagis and team who are this jason hagis and team they are basically the java developers they used to work for a company called as a thoughtworks company in the year 2004 they have developed a framework in order to perform unit testing basically jason hagis and team are not the qa team they are the development team they have perform they want to go and perform unit testing on the product which they are working on so they have designed a framework team okay and the original name of the selenium is jsft what is jsft stands for jsft stands for javascript functional testing i repeat javascript functional testing team okay so they have named the selenium tool as javascript functional testing then later on with lot of modifications over there in this jsft tool it came into the market with the name as selenium okay team then selenium supports multiple languages like java .net, php perl ruby python pascal etc so if you know any one of the technical language team you can easily go ahead and work with selenium tool okay fine <coughs> let us go and look into the next concept team. let us go and look into the advantages of so selenium so when it comes to the advantages of selenium selenium is an open source tool what do you mean by open source tool open source in the sense you don't have to purchase any license it's a freeware you can easily go and download it and you can utilize it right team then coming to the next point selenium supports all the browsers like internet explorer firefox chrome opera safari etc yes you can automate any of the application on any of the browsers and do remember the application should be a browser application it should not be a windows application it should be a web based application okay team so that we can go ahead and work with the application on any of the browsers 
then coming to the next point selenium supports all the operating systems like windows linux unix mac etc so we can work on any of the operating systems using this selenium team there is no limitations for it okay then coming to the next point selenium supports multiple languages like as i told you java php dot net perl ruby python pascal etc so if you know any one of the technical language you can easily go ahead and work with selenium tool we can implement both user defined and a built-in frameworks in selenium yes so we can easily go ahead and work with the user defined frameworks as, a, as well as the built-in frameworks what are the built-in frameworks team built-in frameworks are the frameworks designed by the vendor they are going to provide us such as JUnit and test engine i'll let you know team going forward so so that how we are going to configure this JUnit and test engine frameworks how we are going to design this user defined frameworks as well so entire this framework concepts will be at the end of the session okay we are going to cover at the end once we are done with the web driver concepts and all this all the basic concepts and the web driver concepts and all this then we will go and look into how to work with the frameworks okay team fine then let us go and see the next concept <coughs> Disadvantages of Selenium, yes. Apart from the advantages, there are some disadvantages of Selenium as well. What are they? Selenium supports only web-based application team. Yes. When it comes to Selenium, Selenium is going to support only web-based. It is not going to support any Windows-based application team. Then coming to the second point, Selenium is a combination of multiple components so that the configuration and utilization is a bit difficult. Yes. So when it comes to Selenium team, configuration, configuring a Selenium and utilizing a Selenium is a bit tricky. But don't worry. See, we are going to <coughs> do these configurations on a regular basis so that it will be go, it will be easy for us to get a good hands-on experience on configuring the Selenium tool as well. Okay, team. Then Selenium supports the multiple languages so that we should have more technical knowledge. Yes. So Selenium is going to support mul multiple languages that is, you know, you can go and work with Selenium with Java, .NET, PHP, Perl, Python, right team. So it will be good if you have more technical knowledge as well. <coughs> Lack of technical resource. This is the main de disadvantage. When it comes to the third point team, when I say Selenium supports a multiple language, that was an advantage. Now here again, I'm saying this is a disadvantage to work with the multiple languages. Why team? Because let us say, for example, Say I am working in a Java project and I am working on Selenium with Java. <coughs> now, uh, say later on my client has came to me and say that he has gathered a team, all the automation team and says, announces that, okay team, we are done a good job with Selenium with Java. Now let us go and uh, work on Selenium with PHP or CF, Selenium with Python or Selenium with Ruby or Selenium with .NET. Then in that case, again, I should be wondering how can I, where should I go and get the get this uh, training of .NET or get the training of Ruby. How can I go and handle the things, right team? So before that, you before you go and uh, <coughs> get into this, obviously it would be good if you go and have a good hands-on experience on different technologies like you know .NET, Ruby as well. Okay, team. <coughs> then. Coming to the next point, lack of technical resources. Yes, if you go and look in the market, market team, you can find very less people who are good enough in Selenium. Okay, team? Because learning Selenium is different. Practicing Selenium is different. Okay? So, when you go and learn Selenium, that is different, team. Okay? When you go and practice Selenium, that gives a good experience. That gives a good hands-on experience. And do remember, team, until and unless you go and prepare the Selenium, do you, until and unless you go and practice, practice this selenium tool you cannot go ahead and uh, cover the interviews team okay you cannot go and you know overcome the interviews as well because all the questions in the interviews will be in the real time scenario so you have to go and learn it at any cost okay fine let us go and look into the difference between qtp tool and selenium tool so as i told you the functional testing tools are qtp tool and selenium tool now over here let us go and see what are the difference between a qtp tool and selenium tool so when it comes to qtp team QTP is a licensed tool which is developed by Jason Huggy, uh, which is developed by sorry Mercury Interactive Corporation and later it is acquired by HP. That is QTP tool that is Quick Test Professional is a licensed tool. We have to go and purchase the license and this was developed by the Mercury Interactive Corporation and now it is acquired by HP that is Hewlett's package team. Okay, Hewlett's package team, package company has been owned this QTP tool. Fine, then coming to Selenium, Selenium is an open source tool. We don't have to purchase any license, right team? And this was developed by Jason Huggies and team from the ThoughtWorks company. <coughs> then again, coming to QTP, QTP supports the scripting languages like VB scripting and Java scripting, okay? We can go and work with the VB scripting and Java scripting if you know, right team? Over here in Selenium, we it, since it supports multiple languages, you should know any one of the technical language, right? 
either Java, PHP, Perl, Python, Ruby, Pascal, etc. Anything. Then QTP supports only Windows operating system. Yes. So QTP is going to support only Windows operating system. I cannot go ahead and work with QTP on Linux operating system. I cannot go ahead and work with QTP tool on Mac operating system as well. When coming to Selenium, Selenium is going to support all the operating systems including Windows, Linux, Mac, etc. Then coming to QTP, QTP supports only Internet Explorer, Firefox and Chrome browsers. Okay team, only these browsers are going to be supported to QTP. When it comes to Selenium team, Selenium supports all the browsers available in the market including all this Internet Explorer, Firefox and Chrome. Apart from that, we can go and automate using Opera or Safari browsers and any of the browsers available in the market. Okay team. Now, in the QTP, there is a dedicated location called an object repository to store the properties and values of the objects in QTP. Yes, over here we are going to store the objects, properties and values. So what are the objects team? In the application, if you go and see, basically we will be having the edit boxes, we will be having the radio button, we will be having the checkbox, we will be having the images, we will be having the links, buttons, right team? Apart from that, could you be able to find anything? Apart from some text or something like that, do you have some anything over there, team? Apart from drop down, okay? Let us say drop down, okay? Any anything else? Obviously no, right? So probably in this <coughs> application, all these all these elements, all these elements are considered as objects when it comes to QTP, okay? So they are going each and every object does have some valid properties and values, unique properties and values. It is going to capture all the properties and values and we are going to store it over there in the object repository and then when I go and run the script, when I go and design a script in QTP tool and when I go and run a script, it will go and compare the object repository's properties and values with the application's properties and values and then, then it's going to execute the script team, right? Then it will go and perform some automation testing activity over there by using QTP tool. When it comes to Selenium tool, there is no dedicated location to store the properties and values of the objects in Selenium. Okay, there is no pro <coughs> there is no object repository to store any properties and values. We are not going to store any values over there in Selenium team. Now coming to QTP, we can implement only user defined frameworks in QTP. Okay, so we don't have inbuilt frameworks in QTP team. Wherein in Selenium we do have user defined as well as built in frameworks. And coming to QTP team, we can directly integrate with a test management tool like quality center tool from QTP. Okay, that means if I get any defect. I, if I want to raise any defect from QTP tool, I can directly go and post the defect into the defects tab from the QTP tool. But such type, <coughs> such type of integration is not available using Selenium. Okay team? <coughs> Fine. Let us go and look into the Selenium team. Selenium is a comp Selenium components. What is Selenium? Selenium is a combination of multiple components and majorly there are four different types of components available. What are they? Selenium IDE, Selenium RC, Selenium WebDriver and Selenium Grid. When it comes to Selenium IDE, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. I repeat, Integrated Development Environment, okay. And Selenium IDE is nothing but a record and a playback tool team wherein we can easily go and record the steps and then we can go and playback it. We can go and rerun it, okay. Then coming to Selenium RC, RC stands for Remote Control, okay. When I work with a Selenium RC, when we are going to work with Selenium RC team, we have to go and invoke the server. Okay, we have to go and invoke a Selenium server to go and work with Selenium RC. To, while executing the scripts, we have to invoke the server. Then coming to the Selenium web driver. <coughs> so in the real time scenarios, we will be working on Selenium web driver only team. So we are going to focus much more on Selenium web driver concepts in our training session. Then comes to Selenium grid. So coming to Selenium grid, what is this grid team? We are going to <coughs> execute some of the queries over there, so, I mean we are going to execute some of the commands over there to integrate, to work with the Selenium grid so that when I go and run the script, it will go and run the functionalities of the application on different browsers parallelly, okay, all at a time. That I will let you know team later on, fine. Let us go and see how we are going to work with Selenium ID. When it comes to Selenium ID, Selenium ID is, an, is the record and a playback tool for the web based application. That means this is the add on for the Firefox browser. Okay, that means we can install the Selenium IDE in the Firefox browser, launch the IDE from the Firefox browser, design the scripts and execute the scripts only through the Firefox browser. In the sense, Selenium IDE only supports Firefox browser. We cannot go ahead and work with Internet Explorer browser or a Chrome browser using Selenium IDE. Okay, you cannot go ahead and work with Selenium IDE if you want to work with Chrome browser. Okay team, so by default we should have a Firefox browser to be installed on it. Okay, now let us go and see <coughs> how
how we are going to install this selenium so basically let us go and open our official website of selenium that is seleniumhq.org team okay do remember seleniumhq.org is the official website and in this official website when you go and click on this downloads if you go to downloads it will be navigated to the downloads page now what you need to do you need to go and scroll down you can see selenium ide over here what you need to do team you need to go and download this 2.9.0 i'm going to click on it now it's going to download <coughs> Then I am going to install it. It will ask me to restart the browser. Fine, it is done. Now let us go and see team. Over here, this is the Firefox browser. Now what I am going to do, I will go to tools. You can see Selenium ID over there. I am going to click on it. Now it is going to open the Selenium ID. So this is the dashboard of the Selenium ID. Let me go and explain you the Selenium ID dashboard team. What is this? Why we are going to use it and what are the components it does have so basically the selenium id we can find a base url over there wherein is going to show me the url which we are working on we can also execute faster or slower the scripts ex script execution as well on the left hand side you can see as you can see a record and a playback tool okay that is record so basically by default selenium id will be in the recorded mode so when i go and click on it it will stop recording it is not recording my voice or something like that team it will go and record the activities which we are going to perform over here okay do remember and then we do have a test case we can easy, easily go and create a new test case or add or delete a test case we can also save this test case as well over here and you can see the two buttons team and test suit play entire test suit and the very next button is play current test case now what is a test suit team when it comes to test suit team okay what is a test case basically a test case is nothing but a group of test steps test case is nothing but a group of test steps in a definition way if you go and see a test case is nothing but a sequential elaborated executable form of the requirement is called a test case right team <coughs> or else in a simple way we can say that a test case is a group of test steps now a test case is a group of test steps a group of test cases is something called as a test suit okay team or we can call it as a test suit or test bed or test test um a test set as well okay <coughs> So that is what we call it as test suit. Test suit is nothing but a group of test cases. Say if I have multiple test cases, if I want to execute them, I can directly go and click on test suit. Test suit. Okay, team. If I want to execute a particular test case, I can go and click on play current test case. And over here, we do have command, target, and value, which are pretty much important in our Selenium IDE. Let's go and see what is this difference between this command, target, and value. What does this says? command says it is nothing but we are going to perform some activity or action on any of the element so in the qtp as i told you all the elements are identified as objects okay team but in selenium in the in the application web based application we consider them as web elements okay we consider them as web elements over here now over here what we gonna do we are going to look into this command target and value for each and every element we do have a particular command let us say for example if i want to click on a button if, if the element is a button okay team if the element is a button so what is the ac activity that i can go and perform can i go and type something over there on a button no can i go and check a check check uh, check a button no can i go and select something from the drop down in the same way i can go and do the do the activity over there on a button obviously no right team so then what is the activity that i can go and perform on a button i can go and click on a button right team i can go and click on a button so this is how the command is whatever the activity or action you are going to perform on a web element on a particular element that you are going to <coughs> that you are going to put it over there okay team in the command now coming to the target what do you mean by target team target is nothing but the location of the element let us say i have five links over there team. link one link two link three link four and link five and the name of all the links are same now how can you see how can you say that you want to go and say i want to go and click on the third link how can you go and say that you want to go and click on the link? basically that represents the target target in the sense it does how each and every element have a unique properties we are going to identify that unique properties we are going to put them in the script and then we are going to run them okay team <coughs> so then coming to the values what is the value value is nothing but 
the whatever the data which we are going to input into the application is something considered as a value okay team say if i want to enter some value over there say for example in the gmail application itself if you go and see i want to enter url then i want to enter username i want to enter password as well so all these are considered as values over here okay team now let us go and see <coughs> how can i go and automate one of the application uh, let me go and take a facebook.com application team i will say facebook.com okay so i'm gonna work with the facebook.com application so here is my facebook.com application and now i want to go and automate it okay let me go and uh, minimize this all right <clears throat> so here is my facebook.com application team and here is my selenium ide tool now let me go and show you how we are going to work with it let me go and start recording i'm going to start recording now i'm going to enter some values over there let us say i'm going to put some junk data over there team i will say testing one two three four again i'm going to check a checkbox you can see team for each and every activity which we are going to perform it is going to generate some script automatically i will say first name surname email mobile password then i want like to go and uh, select some date values as well 20 say november 2015 let's say mail okay team let me go and stop it so all the activities that we are going to perform have been captured say in the first example in the first command if you go and see first line okay what is that is going to say you team is going to launch the facebook.com application then what you are going to do is going to type what is the command as i told you like you know what is the command command is nothing but an activity or actions that we are going to perform on the application so what is the activity that we performed over there team type what is that we are going to type testing one two three four is the value is the input value where we are going to type this is the identification of this location now let us go and see team what are the locators and all this then we can go and come back to the script again <coughs> what are locators locators are nothing but the identification of the elements in a web based application so these identification we call it as the locators let us say what is this identification team basically what is this identification let us say for example there is a class there, there is a school okay wherein i do have some 20 kids over there sitting over there and i would like to call one kid so if i don't know his name how can i go and call him team okay if i don't know his name if i don't know the particular names kid how can i go and call him but i want to call him if i know his role number i can call him right if i don't know his role number how can i go and call him again if i know his uh, surname or his father's name or his mother name i can easily go and call him as well right so these are nothing but the identifications okay these are nothing but the identifications similarly in our web based applications as well we do have different identifications for each and every web element so based on those identifications we are going to write the scripts and run the scripts because our eclipse tool does not know where is this tool or else our cilium id does not know what is the location what is what is the what is the element location right so what we are going to do team we are going to have that locations over there in the selenium id that so that it will go and easily look into that particular element and it will go and perform the respective command or the activity or action on it okay let us go and see there are different locators we are using to identify the elements in application what are they id name identifier link export css and DOM. so i can go and identify an element with respect to id with respect to name with respect to identifier link text export css and DOM as well okay team so these are all called as an different locators so to see the locators of the element in an application team we need to install firebug yes in the firefox browser i need to go and install firebug even this is a freeware team okay this is just an add-in add-in what do you mean by add-in team add-in is nothing but a license okay so firebug is the add-in for the firefox browser and by using this firebug we can see the list of the locators of the elements in a firefox browser now let us go and see how we are going to do this 